or in this video, I'm going to talk about what you can do as a man to lead your relationship and why most men absolutely fail in this. They either become this complete dictator where they just tell her everything that's happening or they don't do anything at all and they just leave all the big decisions to his wife because he's like, well, I just want her to be happy. I'll give her what she wants. And the thing is, is it's counterintuitive because it's not what she wants. Not at all. Not by a long shot. Your wife wants you to take charge, be assertive, and take control of your life. In other words, she needs to see some dominant behavior by your part. It doesn't mean to dominate her, just to show dominant behavior in your life. We gotta show you how to be a leader in your relationship. If you can do this, you won't have any problems with relationships. You won't have problems with your wife because this is the thing that most women crave more than anything else. So, let's get started. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray the Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. All right, leadership is not about dominating your wife or taking control where she has no say. Leadership is setting a vision and going there with assertiveness. In other words, this is what I want to go and this is what I want to create. The best way to think about leadership is that it is the creator. In the relationship, you are the creator of an experience called marriage and life. What you need to do is have this seductive lifestyle. Create a life that is seductive for yourself so that she will find it seductive for her. And you do this by going out there and being assertive and making it happen, right? So if you want to have a great date, one example would be you pick the place, you pick what you're going to wear, and then you go fucking do it. And you say, hey, baby, I'm going to go do this place. Why don't you come along? So you leading the vision, leading what needs to happen in your relationship is absolutely key. If you can't do this, what will end up happening is that she'll get very frustrated with you. And you'll start seeing that she just won't trust you with things. She won't trust you with anything. She'll start taking on more and more tasks around the house and tasks in your life because she now starts taking the dominant position in the relationship because she doesn't trust that you can. The sexuality starts to go out the window with it as well. And you're like, well, this is great. She's taking care of all these things. I don't have to worry about it. And then you go to approach her for sex and she turns you down. You're like, well, what's wrong? I don't understand. My body's horny. Why isn't yours? She's like, because you're not doing the things that turn me on which is creating the dominant perspective, creating a dominant assertion in your relationship. Your lack of direction creates a drift. In other words, you might set a vision and then you just kind of back off of it and then what ends up happening is you're drifting off. You drift off course and she'll feel this. She'll feel this drift off of course from when she's with you and she'll start to nitpick you a little bit on what's going on with you. A lot of times guys do this because he gets stressed at his job or he gets stressed at work you're stressed in this business, you'll start sedating. And now she'll start nitpicking on all little things. And she'll say, hey, you're not doing what you said you're going to do. You're not creating this lifestyle that you promised you're going to create. What's going on here? Why are you doing this? And the thing is, is he won't notice that this is what's really what she's saying. And she'll start nagging. And the nagging is designed to get you to move forward in the right direction. But most guys try to address the, the nag that's right here in this moment. Like she'll get on to you about forgetting to take out the trash. But really what she's saying is this reminds her of all the times you forget all the other shit around the house because you're just completely not present. You're not present with her, you're not present with the kids, you're not present with your family at all. You just got your mind always about work or something else on your mind. And so the problem is you're just not present. So the game isn't trash can. The game is the fact that you're not here and present in the faculties of what's happening in this relationship. And so you as a husband, if you were present, you wouldn't allow that to happen. And you'll see that she'll say this to you. I shouldn't have to tell you to take out the trash. And you're like, well, I don't get it. Why, well, what's the problem? Just tell me. And she's like, no, if you're on top of things, like a leader should be, you're on top of the game, you'd see this shit happening. You'd manage the house properly. Delegate the tasks. Your wife shouldn't be the one delegating the tasks. That should be you. You'll find that most wives would rather you tell them what to do instead of leaning on her to figure it all out all the time. How many of you guys are watching this wife and say, I'll make anything you want. Just tell me what you want for dinner. Like, I don't know, baby, whatever. And then it just drives her fucking crazy. You're not getting any direction, not getting any leadership. She's like, no, drive the fucking boat. Tell us what you want. We'll give you what you want. Just tell us. Most women would be so happy if the guy would just tell her what he needed, what he wants. But most of the time he won't because he's so worried about what she wants, trying to make her happy. And so you get two people trying to make each other happy and you end up being miserable. So setting the direction in your relationship and making sure everybody stays on that path so it doesn't drift is absolutely a key. And so when you're in your relationship with your woman and you start to drift and she starts to get on to you about something, or maybe she gets upset, she starts to nag you, or she gets emotionally dysregulated, she gets fearful because maybe she feels that she gets a little bit jealous or you're not present or something and she'll get on to you. And the first thing guys usually do is they just get defensive. It's like, no, baby, it's not that at all. Because he's not present with himself, he doesn't dig down and see what the core issue is within himself that's actually having her react to him. This guy's just react to her reacting. 
and it ends up spiraling, gets into this giant, huge knock down, drag out fight. Instead of trying to just be defensive, stop, slow it down, and just respond to what you're seeing versus reacting defensively. As soon as you start getting defensive, she just amps it up, she spins it up even more. And you're like, I don't understand how to calm this down. It's like, this is because you need to calm yourself down. Calm yourself down, get to the root of what you're, she's actually talking about, the root of what's actually going on within her, instead of just thinking it's something against you or an attack against you or how you failed somehow and how she's getting on to you. And look at what's really going on. What's the breakdown in this conversation that you're having with her? Once you get to the root of that and then you respond to that, you'll find that she calms down almost instantaneously. Like for instance, earlier today, I was gonna make love with my wife and she came downstairs, she's like, I don't know if we wanna do this, you know, we're kinda of spun up, we're all in go, go, go mode and all those things and I was like, and she's like, you just, you just wanna have sex just to let the pressure off from the business and all this stuff. I was like, no, actually that's not where I'm going. I actually really wanna be with my wife right now. I was looking forward to it because we have a baby at home and who knows when your period might start. So I'd like to do it now not later, and, and then she just calmed right down because she saw that I was wanting to connect with her, that I was here to connect with her and not to be used as some sort of a mechanism for most self-gratification or to blow off steam or whatever, which most guys do. And like my wife, she has been accustomed to this happening from her, from my past self, and from guys that she's been with before, but most women are. They're accustomed to this kind of behavior. And so your ability to just respond to her by slowing it down, instead of reacting defensively, is exactly what you need to be able to do. Often this gets overlooked because guys just don't even know to look for it, and that is to create structure. So a good example of creating structure in a relationship is like just setting up a chore schedule for the kids. Now, why is this important? Because your wife, in her mind, every little task has no time to it. It's just a task, and she has nothing to rely on. So what ends up happening, she just gets overwhelmed because the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, then she tries this and she gets distracted to something else and she gets a text and then before you know it, she's four hours in and she's losing her fucking mind once the kids start yelling and fighting with each other. And the thing is, there's no structure here. There's no structure for her to rely on and so she's just kind of all over the place. And so for you as a husband, you could create like a chore schedule. You could create, this is how we operate as a family, we communicate. You could create, hey, show me what needs to be done and then I'll help you manage these tasks. And you get ahead of this early in the morning because your wife has this endless to-do list in her mind. And as soon as she gets going on it, she's already overwhelmed. And so now she's playing this game of battling her emotional self versus what she really wants, which is to be open and to play. And without this structure, everything starts to get overwhelmed for her and now you're dealing with this wife who's never ready for sex, she's never open with you, she's always upset and angry. And it isn't because it's her time of the month. Sure, that can contribute, but most of the time it's this lack of structure in the household and the way that you're operating in life that she can't rely on. This is why your discipline as a man, going to the gym and maintaining your habits, your lifestyle and creating this awesome seductive life is so key. And you can't let your wife and you can't let your kids pull you off of this because this is the foundation for which your family is starting to operate in. Again, you're the leader. You're the guy who must go first. If you want something different in your life, you have to be the one who changes. You have to be the one who actually goes out and does the thing so that they can follow and see it as an example. Remember, your kids don't do what you tell them. They do what you do. So if you want them to be different and operate different, just start operating different. You'll see that you provide this kind of structure of how you maintain your life and holding the entire family in this frame and foundation will absolutely revolutionize the way that your wife sees you and interacts with you and sees your attractive value. The primary thing your wife is looking for from you is safety. Everything comes down to safety. Everything about the way her intuition works, the way that she interacts with you, to what guys she talks to, which people she talks to, which women she talks to, it all comes down to this game of safety. And so for a guy, it's like, yeah, I provide safety for my family. I can go out there and defend her. It's like, yeah, you might be able to physically defend her, but do you? Do you verbally defend her? Do you create an emotional safe place for your wife to just say whatever it is she needs to say without repercussion? Where your wife can just emote however she needs to and feel safe that you still got her, that she's still your woman, that you, that you just fucking got her, and that she can just be how she needs to be? Most guys cannot handle their wife's emotional state. They just react, and so they don't create this emotional safe space. Or they don't hold down a job. And they're jumping from one job to the next and there's no financial security in the house. Financial security is absolutely fucking critical for your wife to settle down, as well as the emotional safety. She should be able to emote and say whatever she needs to say. And you, as a man, cannot react like an unhinged maniac freaking the fuck out. 
Women go for intelligence in men because guys who are more intelligent tend to have a better emotional self-control, sometimes their own detriment, to where they just lock themselves down, and that's a different issue. But for this one, when she's getting on to you about something or she's emoting because she's upset or she's expressing something, you reacting in an unhinged way or just getting defensive isn't helpful. It's not creating a safe place for her to tell you what needs to happen. And we see this most commonly when the guy has a bid for sex and she turns him down and he starts pouting about it. He gets angry. He starts saying, all the stuff I've done for you and you don't even want to do this. And he feels completely dejected and wants to attack her. See, if he had taken the time to actually get her to open up and create this safe space, then she might turn it around in just a couple of minutes. But generally that doesn't happen because most guys can't get to that point. And so then it turns into this game of every time he asks for a bid for sex, she armors up because she's expecting the backlash if she says no. And so what ends up happening is she just gives him her body once a month or once every couple of weeks and he's like, this isn't satisfying, she's not in it. That is a symptom of you not creating emotional safety in your own house. If you wanna demonstrate leadership in your relationship, you have to be decisive and you have to take action quickly. In other words, don't sit in this place of, well, I'm not sure. No, just make a decision and go, it doesn't really matter. Really, she just needs to see that she can fall back on the fact that you can make a decision when she is afraid to or that she is uncertain. She's gonna leverage your certainty in life to make her feel safe. If you're certain, then she can be uncertain, it's okay. If you're certain, then that means that you, she knows that you're gonna take action if everything falls, if she falls apart, she can still rely on you to make things happen. That only comes from a guy who takes action and is assertive. Most guys are not assertive, not by a long shot. They're people pleasers. They wanna make everybody else happy. They wanna apologize for fucking everything. And they don't go after what it is they want. You can tell, just look around. Guys are afraid to go to the counter and ask for what they want, afraid to flag down the waitress, afraid to go get up and ask the stewardess for something. This happens all the time. Afraid to just like move the seatbelt buckle in the airplane because he's worried that this other guy might offend him and he gets all nervous and anxious about this guy's opinion. Like he, this is insane. This is insane thinking that just leads to this place of just scarcity in his relationship. She needs to see this power and conviction from you, this certainty and decisiveness. This is attractive to her because that means that she can rely on you to do what needs to be done and you go after what it is you want unapologetically. And if you cannot do this, this is something you must remedy immediately. If you want to lead your wife, you have to be emotionally intelligent and aware of what's actually going on. And that's never going to happen if you can't dive into your own emotional state and understand what's going on within. If you can't understand what's going on within, you're never going to be able to understand what's going on with her because you're going to get emotional about everything she does and you're going to start reacting because you're looking for approval from your wife. You're looking for her to tell you you're a good boy or a good husband or a great lover. You shouldn't need this. You should be able to understand what's going on. You should be able to see what's going on within your wife. If you want to seduce your wife's soul, you have to be able to see her soul. You're never going to be a soul seducer if you cannot look within her soul and see what she needs. Sometimes it's not what she wants, but it's always what she needs. And you can see this because you understand what you need and you honor what you need. And because of this, you've been able to seduce your own soul. You can now seduce hers. And if you can't do this, if you're not emotionally intelligent enough to see what's happening with your wife and you're afraid of her emotions because you're afraid of your own emotional state, you're never going to do it. You're going to be this, have this wall of just blandness between the two of you and she'll never be able to connect with you. And eventually, and with enough time, what she's going to do is she's going to find another guy who's going to connect with her. Now she's going to be really conflicted. She's going to be like, I'm with my husband, but I love this other guy. What do I do? And this is something that you created because you refuse to go within and be intelligent about the way that you feel about yourself and unapologetically express that and be assertive in, in your life and how you want to be and what you want. And because of this, you won't, aren't able to feel her. If you're able to feel yourself, you'll be able to feel her. And then you'll be able to see exactly what it is that she needs in the moment before she even opens her mouth. If you really want to have leadership in your relationship, you have to foster this feeling of partnership with her. Yeah, you're the creator. You're the guy who's doing all the shit. But you also go within her to get some input, like what's going on. But not in an asking for permission kind of a way, but it is a, hey, well, let's build something together. I'm going to go here in this direction. Do you want to help me build this? Do you want to go do this cool shit? You're here to play with me. Let's go fucking play. And if you're in this place, then she's going to trust you. She's going to want more of that. She's going to be like, yeah, create all this stuff. Give me everything you got. I want all that. Just keep going. And she's going to be your biggest cheerleader. And everything you do is going to turn her on. But if you keep being apologetic and you keep asking her for permission to build what you need to create in your heart, and you're refusing to do that because you're afraid of her opinion, you're afraid of the opinions of other people, then it's never going to work. You're going to spin this relationship right out and she's going to lose all the desire to be with you because you're Let's make no mistake, you're with this woman to play. That's the whole reason you're in a relationship. So when you stop creating, you stop doing cool shit in the world, you stop playing, you 
throw out your end of the bargain. And you can't do that if you're asking everybody else for permission. Because what comes out of you isn't you. It's what everybody else wants. And that is not why your wife signed up to be with you. She signed up to be with you so you could be the best version of you. And as soon as you do that, things take a massive and radical shift. Brother, I know it's not easy starting out this game of leadership. If you're with somebody, maybe she cheated on you, maybe she's got one foot out the door, she says she wants a separation, and you're like, I'm afraid to take any move because any move could be the wrong move and it's gonna send her out the door. Well, I guarantee you, any move you're making right now probably will. So why don't you try the moves that I suggest? Because I guarantee you, I've had over 3,500 guys go through the Broken to Badass program and they have success because they learn how to lead. They learn how to provide structure. They become emotionally intelligent. They learn how to heal themselves from within and become absolutely fucking badass. And they seduce themselves so they can seduce their wife by creating a seductive life. So if you want to learn how to master long-term relationships, check out this link here. Ciao. And I'll see you in the next video.